So welcome uh, to this very special edition of a chat with chair. Uh, we are indeed uh, privileged to have Mr. Rakesh Varma, chairman of the FIKI Geospatial Technologies Committee, and also the chairperson and managing director of Map My India. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Varma, for joining us uh, today. And if I can just start with a very, very simple question, because many of us, including me, and I know you have the maps behind you, but uh, what is the geospatial market? And you know, what does it entail, like a hardware, software, products, and services uh, in India? Uh, what is the geospatial market? The best way to understand geospatial in the most simplest way is maps. Now, maps, historically, everybody has known a paper map, a print map. But with the digital world coming in 20 years back or 30 years back, something like that, the, th uh, the entire mapping moved to the digital side of the uh, digital side. Now, what that led to was the revolution using the maps as a basis for doing all kinds of planning, and understanding how to uh, how, how to do what somebody wants to do. Examples being whether it's a delivery or whether it is whatever. Now, what is the market? There is a part which you acquire the data, acquisition, you collect it through field survey, you collect it through satellite, you collect it through drone, however you collect it. So there are, that's the hardware part of the devices which collects the data. The second part is the software. The software is the one that processes the data and disseminates the data. And the third part is the data itself. So it, the geospatial industry is made up of hardware, software, and data. It's very interesting. Want... It's very interesting that you say that because, you know, uh, my experience with maps and, you know, in, in the journey that I had in the 80s and 90s, uh, when we used to trek, uh, let's say, up in the mountains. So one of the challenges was that uh, we could not get one inch, one mile resolution maps, uh, right? Uh, now, I think uh, we, we actually, you know, I think uh, that whole one inch to one, uh, uh, one mile resolution is a thing of the past. But what does it mean for an ordinary person in terms of, you know, uh, the accessibility of information and, 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 and the use of this information in day-to-day life or in businesses? Well, you, uh, the trekking part you talked about, you know, we have to go even, I lived in the U.S. those days. And with those paper maps, we used to drive, go from one place to another. Trekking also, you had some kind of a paper map, but you know, the difficulty was you get lost. You can't exactly relate to the paper maps. So now the, the impact of this digital maps have been on, not just on the individuals, not for just the government for better governance, bringing transparency, but also in the business world in a big way. And when you think of the impacts on Today's smart city, if you think about it, what is smart city? You want to have everything available on your fingertips. You have a large screen where you want to see where, what the situation is. So on the map, when you plot these information, you are able to make a better decision. Right, so, you know, uh, the government has recently issued the uh, new guidelines uh, in a way that is being called as liberalizing the geospatial sector in India. Uh, how do you see this uh, moment and how is it, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a game changer for the uh, sector? How will it impact the industry uh, from both from the end user's perspective, uh, from the service provider's perspective, let's say the business's perspective and government's perspective? Yeah, it's a landmark historical uh, uh, ch change that has that this uh, liberalization, you call it, or the new guidelines it has brought in. The, it, it's related to the geospatial data. Now, the data, has, we all have been using data in some way or the other geospatial data. 
it has become pervasive in our life can anybody think of today a delivery zomato bringing into your uh, home or a uber you are driving somewhere all this was done using these maps but unfortunately we had the colonial mindset in the country whereby it was considered that map is the prerogative of only for security and i have been hearing our prime minister narendra modi in, including yesterday uh, including a few uh, his talk with nascom saying that if security was the only reason for maps then developments can development can't happen and this is the, this particular liber, uh, liberalization has brought out the importance of how important the maps are for development so what has happened now is it is it has been freed up anybody any indian citizen any indian organization can go and do mapping of the country and and provide the services in the way they want it earlier i mean i'm in the industry for 25 years earlier you had to go to the government authorities to get their approval if you want to do mapping and not only that imagine a portal somebody has to report and that for, for for publishing that portal in the map you had to go and take prior approval so it had become ridiculous so primarily this uh, this kind uh, i relate this uh, liberalization to the days of when uh, courier services had started when the postal department had the monopoly here here the government uh, regulations or the government control over how, what map can be made and what map can't be made was in a way if i don't say monopoly it was i say un, uh, unnecessary restrictions and impacting the economy's development in a big way so fundamental change is that no requirement for asking government if you have to make maps and number 2 go go ahead and disseminate it the way you want it without any any issues uh, related to that so if i were to uh, if i were to uh, just take this a bit uh, forward so uh, what would be you know normally you look at maps as 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 a means to get from place a to place b or uh, you know as used by someone to deliver something from place a to place b what could uh, some of the other uses of maps uh, be and you know how could we actually uh, look at it you know you mentioned pothole and that actually reminded me of something and i'll come back with that question uh, later but you know what can it be used for well if you go beyond navigation beyond route direction think about logistics industry now i'll go away from the way you and i have been talking so far it is estimated that the, the total cost of logistics and distribution in the country is 13 14% of our gdp it has been a lot of studies have been recently done in the last one year and we have been also involved in some way or the other but uh, to analyze that is what are the issues related to that and one of the key element there is if the geospatial data the maps are used properly in the right manner then what will happen the cost of the logistics uh, uh, the uh, logistics and distribution can come down from that by almost 25% easily so that's one example think of agriculture think of health think of uh you mean this consumer products who have to do the market research understand so it's like layer by layer understanding when there is a map where the roads are there the colonies are there and one of the let's say retail giant like hindustan liver or whoever something like that if they are interested in understanding where their market is how to reach that market what is the potential of that think of telecom area the and the 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 towers which have to be put in now that the 5g is coming where much more of this is, uh, this uh, the importance of maps will be realized over there so the is unlimited is almost maps are pervasive in almost every industry and they are all using it i mean as mapma india uh, cmd i am saying probably there is no industry 
where we are not providing them the data to build improve their productivity in the product automotive you are thinking of today electric i mean the cars are already there electric cars are coming very soon and so, and who knows how soon even the autonomous driving or partial autonomous driving cars will come without maps one can't think of all these activities i mean everybody knows uh, google right uh, many of us know how is this different from a google map or you know what is the difference uh, between that they also do stores they also do petrol pumps they also do all that so what is what is what is different google map is a wonderful consumer product and a, a navigation consumer product where the data is there like petrol pumps restaurants hospitals police stations and all that there's absolutely a great product if you want to say in this whole world not just india probably almost every country google has kind of monopolized it in india also primarily because it comes as a preloaded map on the android phones and we know android phones are like 96 97% so in by virtue of that almost they have a monopoly now the only uh, company that has been able to compete with google in spite of that monopoly has been our company map my india and that we have successfully done through the automotive route and going to the businesses directly so uh, put together all these i guess we are a, we have been given solutions to these companies how to solve their business problems google doesn't give the solution to the business problems so that's that's the fundamental difference the second part if you look at it is the change that uh, the change that we are finding now is there there wasn't a level playing field prior to this monday 15th of february the international companies were free to do or they were not free to do but they were doing it freely what they wanted to do without following the country's law and policies indian companies couldn't afford doing that so indian companies had to face that uh, had to follow the rules what has happened now is very clearly there is a level playing field established in this industry so uh, what are some of the bottlenecks that the uh, industry has been facing and you know do these guidelines address it or what more uh, needs to be done i will say the bottlenecks primarily were approval and from the authorities any kind of data collection is dissemination the approval was the fundamental issue the fundamental bottleneck in one stroke that bottleneck has gone away if you ask me are there more required in liberalization i don't think uh, this policy uh, if you read the guidelines it is one of the unheard of guidelines that i have seen if i look at many other policies that have come out in the last 10 years or 15 years from any uh government uh, period it is so well defined and it is so well so clear that you can keep doing things the the way you want it without any hassles so the bottlenecks have been removed so uh, you know very interestingly uh, mr verma if i were to look at it uh, there's a whole lot of talk even in this budget about innovation and r and d and developing an ecosystem mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where this 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 uh, geospatial uh, you know sector stand in this area and uh, you know including your company and others what are the steps that are taken to bring india at par with the uh, let's say the developed uh, nations uh, on the location tech map uh, very good question uh, uh, mr chiray this is one industry one sector where i think india india can be up never without even mincing any words i'll give you a simple example mapmind itself has been an art never company from day one it was founded in 1995 both in terms of capital both in terms of technical capabilities the technology that is acquired in this space of geospatial is absolutely available in the country and it's just not mapmind it's across the board 
So a simple example I can give you. Three, three years back, we brought out what is called Street View. You, all, you and I have all heard about Google Street View. We call it Real View. It's our brand. Now that Real View has been sitting idle in the office because we could, we, uh, we could not take it out. That was an innovation three years back. So, so that the bottleneck was we were not allowed to take it forward. Having the moment with this new liberalization, when such innovations are allowed, after one innovation, you do second innovation, third innovation, fourth innovation, and it's, it can be unlimited innovation. This space is full of inno innovation happening in the country. There are so many companies in, the, in India I'm aware of who are playing their own role and innovating new technology. The time has come where everybody will be able to show, showcase their innovation. So, you know, what is the prospect of uh, Indian firms? You know, if I, for example, I take the Beam or the UPI app, uh, which, you know, has been developed by India and, you know, and it's taking on, not actually taking on, it's an alternate to various other international brands. Do you see a similar opportunity here that we have our own thing and we can, you know, uh, reach out to you in other uh, countries around the world uh, and offer them uh, a choice? Absolutely. First is Beam and UPI are more coming from the government. So there's a difference. What has happened in the geospatial industry, liberalization, if you read it carefully, a lot of focus is there on the private sector. It's, the, it's not saying that the public sector will have a special role. It is saying that both public sector and private sector can have its own role, whoever comes up with whatever. So now coming to the technology and coming to the product, India lacks software products. That's one of, India is very good in services. The change is happening in the geospatial industry also. What we have seen in the past is invasion of software products from abroad. Today, I believe that is not required. It's, it's very good to have competition. Google should be there, others should be there, so that you know Indian companies can go and compete head on, provided there was a level playing field. The level playing field didn't exist. And so what I believe that the R&D work happening in India in this space, the innovation happening in this, this space, with this liberalization, I, I really admire this government for taking this bold step. The value of this will be realized by most of the industries, whether it is in railways or transport or cement. You will see that in the next six months, 12 months, how good they will be finding once it spreads across and they start using it more and more and more. You know, it's very interesting that you say this. Uh, some years ago, when I was researching the economic, uh, the, you know, researching the uh, education sector, uh, one of the things I came across a very good book by a professor Raza, uh, mm -hmm. who was a geographer, mm -hmm. and he bought out a compendium of maps, uh, mm -hmm. you know, of uh, putting that, you know, how many, you know, uh, how many kilometers away is a primary school from a habitation. Uh, how many kilometers away is a secondary school from, you know, how does it vary across, uh, uh, across uh, states and, you know, districts. And in fact, this was before the era of computer. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I hope that, you know, with this now being opened up, these things will become much easier to do. And we can look at, uh, for example, the location of uh, different healthcare centers, vaccination centers on a real-time basis uh, going forward. You, are these applications also going to multiply and uh, go up uh, now? You'll be happy to know one of the reasons we got our, our App Nirbhar App Challenge Award Map My India was we were the first within two days of lockdown in the country last year. Uh, we brought out all the corona uh, treatment centers and kept maintaining it on a daily basis including the migration issues, the containment zones, and a lot of companies started using it for after two, three months as a business side of it for their HR team. 
because you know the employees living in a containment zone they didn't want them to uh, to to be coming to the office and things like that now you talked about schools very interesting actually my grandson two of them are going to be getting admitted in nursery and class, class work and i saw the ad or i saw the requirement saying that the preference will be given to people who uh, student kids who will be within 0 to 3 km of from the school as in delhi that's what the rule is i i wonder how they will know 0 to 3 km who is living somebody will have to make a self certification how do you calculate it in one stroke if i give them the application to all the schools they can click the students address and this will this will, can be all automated and cl- click the address uh, in one button and it will tell the by the shortest distance what is the kilometer length now these things will bring transparency and convenience and ease of admission in that part so i'll give you a couple of examples just now so what are the, what would be some of the future uh, you know uh, innovations and you know congratulations on your winning the award it is going to be my uh, question but you have actually answered uh, the thing why you actually won it uh, for your corona app but what are some of the interesting stuff that you already have and it has not been able to be seeing the light of day because of the restrictions of the day that we we will see in the next uh, a uh, few days or months and what are the opportunities for other startups in this area well uh, let me first talk about the other startups because it's not fair for me to talk about map my india only when you think of many of the startups one example i'll give you which i i uh, i know quite well his name is uh, uh, uh forgetting the name but anyway there is a drone survey now data capturing as i said is a function of using some hardware now drone survey they are building making the drones themselves and they are flying it so with this liberalization that kind of a survey will become much uh, they they find it much easier to do it and get the and process the data so that's one example of startup now startups can be in any field don't have to be in the geospatial industry i am aware of one health area industry uh, part the name of that startup is visit they are doing related to this corona treatment and the vaccination and all that using map my india apis the maps as a basis to really see where those people who are and this is also becoming part of the pmjy some prime ministers health in, uh, related initiative so in every application that you build any kind of an application the moment you add the element of geospatial or a map through an api you don't have to know what is cartography you don't have to think of using any gis software which are complex software just use the api just like the google gives its apis similarly Map India also provides those APIs, and applications can be built on top of that, and the usage will start. We did work for CBDT. We work, did work for doing the work currently with GSTN in the indirect taxes. The the dirt, the amount of uh, tax compliance related things they are able to find just because using the maps and. the amount of their revenue is going up if somebody sits down and calculates so how much is the contribution of the maps there it will be eye opener so you know thank you very much mr rakesh verma for actually simplifying this whole mystery of geospatial industry and you know the hardware software products and services also uh, sharing uh, with us uh, how this uh, new uh, uh, law or new uh, guidelines that have been liberalizing this whole geospatial uh, sector uh, is going to throw up a tremendous opportunity uh, for all such firms in india and how you know uh, using uh, you know map my india apis and other uh, apis there could be a whole lot of other startups and a whole uh, productivity increase within the country and thank you very much and congratulations on your Atmanirbhar Bharat Award from the Government of India, and you know you personally have been a pioneer of digital mapping and location technology in India. It was a delight uh, talking to you, 
and I'm sure a lot of your young people who are listening in uh, to this will find an opportunity and uh, some enterprise in the geospatial sector. So thank you very much. Stay safe and keep well. Thank you. Thank you.